on everybody we are back here for real bodybuilding podcast episode number 14 and i have a special guest on that i have been watching from afar but don't know personally so i have a lot of questions uh my man say hello what's up man what's up brother all right so we're gonna start from the very very bottom first i need to know how to pronounce your name Okay, I was about to ask you the same damn question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to chop up your name and stuff like that. So. <laughs> All right, my name is pronounced Fuad. Fuad, Fuad. Fuad. I thought, I thought I knew you, Fuad. Okay, so yours is Blessing. Is Blessing your real first name? Yeah, Blessing is my real name, yeah, real first okay, that's, name. People don't that's, believe me, but it is. That's awesome in itself. But I make it easier for people to call me the boogeyman. <laughs> All right, we'll call you the boogeyman. That's cool. I can do that. <laughs> um what how do you pronounce your last name my last name is uh i'm you know i'm african so uh, that's where my last name comes from awoodable awoodable perfect so okay I'm good stuff um okay so where where are you from and when did you move to the states so the boogeyman was born in nigeria and i moved to uh i grew up in ireland dublin oh really so, yeah so i moved to Moved to Ireland with my family when I was about nine, ten. You know, so that's where the journey started. Okay, so why did your family move to Ireland from Nigeria? I mean, you know, uh, actually I actually didn't move from my not with my parents. I moved with another brother of mine. You know, I got five brothers and okay. one sister. So the oldest in the family was living in Ireland back then. You know what I mean? Okay. So and my mother taught was a great idea to send us over to Europe for yeah. a better education. Yeah. So that's how I ended up in Ireland. So I was living with my brother, the oldest in the family. Okay. So I grew up with him. So how long did you live in Ireland for? <sighs> Nearly my whole life since since then till till uh I just moved out to uh I just moved to Florida this year in January. How old are you how old are you now? Twenty seven. Okay, so you lived there for like 15, 16 years, well, 17 years almost. Yeah, about, well, yeah, well, 16, 17 years. So did you go to college there or anything or just high school or how did, did you, what did yeah, you do? Yeah, I did, I did go to, yeah, I did go to school in Ireland. Did you go to college or no? Yeah, I didn't, no, I didn't go to college. Well, my situation was, uh, you know, because, I mean, my original plan was my parents sent us to Ireland for a better education, you know what I mean? And uh, it's funny enough because my, one of my, uh, early dream was to become a doctor you know okay you know so i always have a big dream since i was a little kid yeah you know but um i wasn't able to go to college because back then i didn't have to i didn't have to um when i finished secondary school i don't know how school system works out here but in ireland you go you go you do national school and then you go to secondary school and after okay. secondary school that's when you go to um college yeah so after secondary school i didn't have the um Irish citizenship yeah if you have direct citizenship, you, yeah, you get a free education. Yeah. You know what I mean? So because I didn't have the, uh, 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 the citizenship, I wasn't able to, I mean, to support myself. That's right. Know, college, because I mean, you know, I didn't come from a wealthy family. You know, my parents, they live in Ireland. You know, I was living with my brother. My brother had like his own four kids. Yeah. You know, so when I finished secondary school, you know, it was time for me to, you know, to, to find my own way, you know? Yeah. What so, was... Uh, why would uh why didn't okay is there a reason why you didn't get your citizenship to end up to get to free college yeah it's a it's a process you know what i mean it's like it it takes so long okay i didn't get it till 2000 when i got it till about 2000 and uh i can't remember 2010 yeah it's funny i i would have never guessed ireland from listening to your instagram yeah. But now that you say it, I can kind of hear the accent and some of the words you say. Yeah, you know, my, my accent's all over the place, bro. I mean, you yeah. get a little bit of African there. You yeah, know, yeah. Irish a little bit, you know, trying <laughs> not to take the Irish accent and um, maybe some American and stuff. Yeah. You just watch the movies and stuff. You know what I mean? So um, that's where my accent, you know, I'm all over yeah, yeah. <laughs> My, You know, it's, fun. it's okay, so it seems really interesting, but the, my question is, uh. where did bodybuilding come into play if you want to be a doctor? Yeah, you know what? So I wasn't able to go to college because, I mean, my family didn't want money. Uh, and I was leaving my brother back then. He got his own life to, you know, his own kids to look after. 
And when I finished secondary school, I need to move out of the house, you know, get my own, get a job, get my own place. Yeah. So, you know, I was like, you know what, you know, college it just wasn't going to work out, you know. And then uh, before all of that, I was always into lifting weights, yeah. you know, because I grew up as a skinny kid, you know what I mean? And I was, back then I was very, age of, age of 12, uh, 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 age of 12, 13, 14, I was very cautious with the way I looked. I was super, super skinny. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I didn't grow up, growing up, growing up in Ireland, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, there are not a, a lot of black people in Ireland. So growing up, you know, I had to deal with a lot of, you know, bullying and stuff, being pushed around, you know, because I was super skinny. So I, I do get pushed around a lot, yeah. you know, so that's what drove me to work, you know, drove me to lift and weight, yeah. you know, because I mean, I just want to, you know, I want to, I want to get stronger to protect myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I started working out when I was about 14, 15, and I just fell in love with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The first year, you know, I made extremely crazy progress. Yeah. You know, I was, I was, the progress was insane. I was strong. I was, I became very, very strong and, uh, 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 again, a lot of lean muscle tissue. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean. <laughs> so it was a natural, um, natural thing for you. Yeah. You know, so, so that's where, that's when the weightlifting started. Yeah. I have a, that actually brings me to a second, another point I was thinking about. You seem very, very outgoing and very charismatic and obviously that's why people love you it's like not only is your physique great but you're uh -huh. super fucking funny so but the thing is usually people that get bullied or they have a like a rough upbringing or anything like that usually yeah. they're more introverted like they're more quiet uh -huh. mm -hmm. so how how do you explain like going from bullying and being so outgoing I mean, you know, when I, when, I, when I got into great shape and I became strong, everybody, you know, wanted to, you know, hang around with me. I remember on, uh, uh, even in school, you know, I then, you know, everyone started always trying to like, everyone started to just want to be around me because I was so strong and, yeah. you know, bowling and all that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then um, I think uh, after that, after, after that, after uh, secondary school, then I, I started doing uh, personal training. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I wasn't able to uh, uh, go to college. I started doing personal training. And I was always in shape. And um, one time, uh, actually one of my friends, you know, and he said, bro, you know what? I think you should take this to the next level and compete. Yeah. You know? And I was like, nah, I don't want to. Because I didn't know too much about bodybuilding. I know the basic training, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I was always I was in shape. So I uh, eventually I did my fourth show. You know, in yeah. 2011. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't win, but um, I got a lot of great feedback because I, you know, the Wait a minute, feedback. I, I want to back you up a little bit. What, yeah. what triggered all of a sudden? Like, I know your friend told you to do it, but why, why all of a sudden did you just say, you know what, I'm going to compete? And why? And how? How did you get that like snap to do it? I mean, it, like, I didn't. I, Cause I didn't want to compete because I didn't know anything about bodybuilding just because, you know, my mate, you know, he saw the potential, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's like, dude, you've got to do a show. I was like, no, I'm not, I don't want to, I just want to stay in shape and, you know, help other people get in shape. You yeah. know what I mean? But so I, we kept pushing, they kept pushing. So I was like, you know, one day I was like, nah, okay, I'm just going to give it a go. Yeah. So I did. And, um, I think it was a, it was a, it was a really good experience. And then I came out of that. Everyone was telling me how much potential I've got. And how did you do? How did you do? The, sorry, how did you do that first show? I remember. I, I think I was in a. I remember I went into a wrong class. Instead of competing in juniors, I went yeah. into fourth timers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this was yeah. this was in Ireland. So I went into fourth timers. It was uh, there were a lot of big dudes in that in that class. Yeah. And uh, but you know I still you know I still did pretty good because I make top. I make top five. I think I, I okay. think fifth. And everyone yeah. thought I should have done better. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I got a lot of great feedback from, from the judges and like, come on, do give it a go, try again next time. Maybe you should do juniors. So the following year, I did the uh, RIBBF, the Irish Fed Federation Nationals. I did yeah. juniors, so I won. And then I did another one, I won. So I did like three shows after that, juniors, I was, uh, I was undefeated. Yeah. You know, juniors. So, and then after that, I did my fourth international show which was a European championship in 2000 and, uh, I'm trying to remember now, 2000 and, I think it was 2012. Okay. I was placed just outside top six. Okay. And then in 2000 and, uh, 
13, I did my second international show, which was which was the Arnold Classic Europe yeah. Yeah. Juniors. And again, I didn't make top top six. Okay. So, um, 2014, it was my last year's juniors, and I said to myself, "Okay, this is gonna be this is this, this is gonna be it." You know, if I don't play top six, I'm gonna just you know do something else. Yeah. You know, and um, so I did. I went on to that show. I had no coach, and it was funny because uh, I want the I want the show. I want juniors, and I want junior uh, overalls. By yourself. By myself. So it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think. You know what I mean. A lot of that, a lot of that goes to putting that final pressure on yourself. Yeah, that, that's it. That, that happened to me. Like my last year before I turned pro, I was like, if I don't turn pro this year, yeah. that's it. I'm hanging it up. Yeah. And I kind of like you focus a little more because you want it to keep going. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like maybe that because you told yourself this is it, you kind of yeah. push that last little bit, you know. I'm always trying to like I always stay real to myself, you know. I'm always trying to be realistic, you know. Yeah. What I mean, I I always uh, uh, just trying to you know, follow my instincts, yeah. you know, and, um, um, yeah, that, that's it. You know, it was always, it, I knew it was like, okay, listen, if I do not play stop scene, they show that's going to be it for me. You so I, mean? I'm I, gonna do something else. So I have a question. What was your, what was the difference when you were placing outside the top six to when you finally placed in the top six until you finally won? Like, what did you change? Was it a conditioning thing or was it a muscularity or it was the conditioning thing, yeah. Because back then, you know, I, yeah, I didn't really know too much about dieting and stuff like that. But, as, you know, as, uh, every year, I was yeah. getting better and better. Yeah. You know, I started learning more about dieting, started doing more research. So, uh, the Arnold Class 2014, that was my best ever condition, you know, yeah. as a junior. So, where, what me to show. where did you turn pro? What show did you turn pro at? So after uh, Arnold Cross 2014, when I won the juniors, I decided to take um, three years off. Okay. So just, you know, I knew what I, I knew what I needed to do. I need to, you know, bring up my legs, you know, my overall size. Yeah. And um, so I took that three years off. And 2017, I went back to the stage. And I comp- my first show was uh, uh, the Irish International. You know, okay. so I had to do the Irish International to qualify for the uh, IFBB International Show to fight for my pro card. Yeah. So I did that, and I won the overall, so that qualified me to compete for my pro card. So 2007, after that, two weeks later, I flew into Czech Republic mm-hmm. for my first pro qualifying show. That was before the, the split be, be, between the NPC and the... Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. So two weeks later, I flew to Czech Republic, and surprisingly, I won the overall. I got my pro card there, and then I didn't stop there. And then from there, we went to. Uh, now I have a coach, and I have a guy from. Poland. Who's yeah? Just a just a guy from your local area, or somebody? Yeah, from local area. It's a Polish dude. You know what I mean? Okay. So he was helping me with my diet. Yeah. So after that, I went into. Uh, I went to. We went to Portugal for mm-hmm. the international show. So mm-hmm. again, I won my class, I won the super heavyweight, and I won the overall. Okay. And uh, 2017, my main goal was to, was to win the uh, uh, Arnold Classic in Tom Pro. Okay. You know? And then after that, it was the Arnold Classic. You know, and then... But wait a minute. That, but, sorry, you, you already won two cards. Like, you already got your pro card twice. I've got, yeah, that's right. So why did you still follow through and do the Arnold? Just because you wanted to do the Arnold? You know what I mean? That, to be honest, and um, I always said to myself... If, if I get a pro card, I want to. I want to get a proper. I want to know what I'm. Like I, 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 um, I did the work. You know what I mean. I you want to know. You want to know you beat somebody. Yeah, I want to know that I was the best. Yeah. You know what I mean. And it was funny as well because, um, because it was the last year. It was, it was there was a lot of talking going on about the NPC and the IBD European and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was the first year. Uh, the uh, the IBD Europe starting to offer money. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like the more show you do that year, you know, you can you can earn some money at the end of the year. So it's yeah. like points. Yeah. You know, so um so that's why I continue to compete. But you were earning money even for the amateur shows, like even before you it, were it was the first time ever the the, the, the were offering money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show. You know what I mean? So you just kept doing the shows and collecting those so I checks. kept doing the show and I kept ranking up other points and I yeah, was yeah. I was leading, you know, because I, I was undefeated. Yeah. You know, so after the Arnold Classic, I won the Arnold Classic, 
and I might thought was gonna meet Arnold there because every year Arnold normally come out. Yeah. He shakes your hand and he gives you the trophy. So when I won the, my weight class, I was super excited. Yeah. And the overall came on, and then I learned that Arnold left. Oh no. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was so dis- I was like no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because everybody had me, you know, taking the overall. I was I was in there was was a crazy crazy lineup because I was in there with a lot of Iranians. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, uh, you know those guys don't play. Yeah, yeah. That that moment, it, I don't know if people realize how big a deal that is for us. Like I met I met Arnold a couple times at when I did the Arnold Classic, yeah. but it's it's in the lineup. He comes kind of comes down the lineup, and he shakes everybody's hand and thanks them yeah. for doing the show. That's different. But when you win, yeah, like everybody who does that show who wants to win envisions like what are they going to say to Arnold when he asks them a question. Mm-hmm. So did you have your like speech planned out? What you're gonna say to him? Nah, to be honest, I didn't. I, I, was, I was just excited to to meet him. You know, I didn't have yeah. anything planned. I was just super. I was shaking. I was just excited to because Arnold's one of my biggest inspirations. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, and it was it was uh, it was a shame that you know he left just as you- I was getting on stage for the overall. How bummed out were you that he wasn't there to shake your hand? Um. At the end of the day, you know, I was, I was, I was happy because I mean, I just, I just want the overall, yeah, bro. Yeah, of course, you yeah. Know? I got, I got my broken on Arnold Classic stage, so yeah. it was a special moment. You know, would have just been, you know, super cool. You know, like the cherry on top. Yeah, so yeah. me Arnold there, but I yeah. knew for sure it's gonna happen. Yeah, you know? for sure. So for sure. now you got your pro card, and you've taken a few years. You haven't done anything since then, right? I haven't done anything since. And you're pro social media and uh, just having fun with it. <laughs> How uh, your pro debut is scheduled for next year, right? Yeah. What well, do you plan, what What do you plan on doing? Uh, what I'm uh, well, you know, I'm working with Neil now. You know, okay. uh, and then we, we, we're planning on um, uh, doing the Arnold Classic Ohio. Okay. Is Neil taking forty percent of your money? <laughs> no, ninety five percent. I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking. Nobody, don't fucking write comments in the fucking comment section. I'm just joking around. Um, no, I got, I got nothing against Neil. I, I, I was just fucking around. Anyway, so uh, Neil, Neil's a great guy, man. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear that from a lot of people that work with him, so that's cool. But, um, so you're getting ready for? I'm sorry, I didn't catch you. What show are you guys getting ready for? Arnold Classic Ohio. Oh, you are next year. Yeah. Next year. So you're not you're not worried about kind of warming up in a smaller show. You're going right into the big dogs. I'm just going right into it, bro. It's been well, three years. I've been working my ass off for the last three years, you know. Yeah. And um uh I think it'd be a good show for me. I think so too. I this is the this is the craziest thing. I think you have like one point five million followers or something, right? Something That's crazy. Right. I feel like the 1.5 million followers you have know you because you're fucking hilarious. Yeah. But I don't think they realize that you have like a serious physique, man. You know what, bro? You know, it's, you know what? That's, you're completely right. Even the people in the, in the bodybuilding industry, not a lot of them know that I'm a professional bodybuilder. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, listen, I just said to a friend of mine, I said, guess who I got on the podcast? And he, and he guessed and he couldn't guess. And I said, I got blessing on the podcast. And he goes, oh, shit, that guy's hilarious. The funny guy. <laughs> That's right. That's the first thing everybody says. But I looked through a lot of your Instagram and I'm like, this guy's got a fucking serious physique. Yeah. People don't know that, you know, and I, and I like that. You know what I mean? I don't, yeah. I know, I know, um, you know, I just want to, I want to keep that to myself. And um, uh, one, of my, one of the main reasons why I'm doing the Arnold Classic is because for the fact that, um, I've never competed in the U.S. before. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be first time that a lot of people are going to be uh, seeing the boogeyman. That's right. That's right. You know right. what I mean? And, you know, and I believe people will witness something special in that day. I, I, I actually believe that. Stage, yeah, I believe I mean? that too. I think it's crazy to say this, but I think your fan base it right now is is actually more mainstream than hardcore. But I think after you do the Arnold's, yeah, you're gonna get that entire inner circle of bodybuilding. Go, holy yeah. shit, who's that guy? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like right now, like most of my fan base, they're just like kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people who just love a little bit of entertainment who love to laugh. That's you right. Know what I mean, yeah. nothing crazy, and which is this, which is something that I love. You know, I don't, I don't see myself as I don't want to be just a bodybuilder. 
Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I believe there's so much out there. Yeah. That we can we can do. There's so much out there that we can get involved in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rather than just being this serious ass bodybuilder. And but, I'm not a lot of bodybuilder really understand this. And and I feel, I feel the biggest part of that is ego. You know what yeah. I mean? Ego and being lazy. Well, you know? I, I I agree to a certain extent. I think. You don't, you don't seem to take yourself too seriously. So you can do these like joking things and it doesn't like, I think it doesn't, doesn't affect, doesn't look like it affects you mentally. And I do think some bodybuilders are lazy. They just want to work out and they want to go on stage. But I don't think everybody can do what you do, even if they're not lazy. You know what I mean? Like you have to I have mean, you don't have to do what I, I mean, I don't see like you don't have to do what I do, but like get involved. Yeah. Get involved in, in, in stuff. You know, like, I mean, you know, I think, I think that's the only way we can, we can better, we can promote bodybuilding because yeah. bodybuilding, man, bodybuilding is like the hardest sport yeah. out there, the most disciplined sport of yeah. all time. You know what I mean? And I, I believe we deserve more, we deserve more mainstream. Yeah. But we're not getting that because the way our sport is being promoted. Yeah. Because we're very internal. Like we're very, we're all very introverted. So we're not getting out there and experiencing other parts not, of that's right. Yeah. But the thing I think is, and I went through this and I asked a few people in the last, in the last few podcasts, I've been asking this question because I feel like bodybuilding is easier for some people than others. So for you, from me, the outside looking in bodybuilding mm -hmm. seems easy for you that you're able to do all these things and these skits and these funny jokes and stuff, but still, you're still able to maintain a great physique. Mm. But for a lot of people, like for myself, I had to focus everything just to build what I had. I never felt like I could do all these other things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know if everybody is capable of doing more. Sometimes people just have to like channel that energy into one thing. Yeah, I get you. But um, yeah, I don't know. Oh man, because everyone, everyone's different. That's you right. Know what I mean? That's right. And, and for me, I, I feel like you know that, that's you know um, people can definitely do more, you know, than than just. I agree. I agree. Know, I, I know it will be it will be so much just better for our sport if if the leaders, like the top bodybuilders, are doing more than yeah. just being. No, I agree. I think, I think the rest of I think the rest of society would see us a little differently uh, and a little different. That's yeah. what I mean. More yeah. approachable. Yeah. Like a kid would see me, like a, a kid would see me on the street. Would, oh shit! That's you know that's that guy. You know. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the funny guy. You know, they're, you well, know they're, they won't look at me as you know. Yeah. Well, it's because you're showing a side of you that's like approachable, whereas a lot of us just close ourselves off. Hmm. And we just go to the gym and we eat and people are scared of us. For me, like when I started doing videos with muscle and strength and people see me doing the eating videos and all this stuff, yeah. people don't even recognize me from the stage anymore. They're like, oh man, I saw your fucking eating video on muscle and strength. And they're able to come talk to me now. So you yeah, are right. right. You are right. You show a, like an open side of yourself uh -huh. and people feel more comfortable. So I, I do think it's important. But I want to ask in saying that, I want to know how you're able to, like, are you so genetically gifted that you can miss a meal here and there and still maintain this physique? Or are you one of these guys that's like on the ball all day long? Yo, <laughs> it's like, that's a good question right there because, um, you know, because what people do see me doing on social media, people don't think um, I, I take these sports seriously. Yeah. You know what I mean? People think, oh, this guy just, you know, running around all day and probably skip a meal or two. No, I never skip a meal. Yeah. You know, if I skip a meal right now, I'll fill it the next morning. I'll probably lost a pound or two. So this is you the, that's, I mean? it's an interesting thing you said because so when bodybuilding I. Bodybuilding is yeah. my life. You know, yeah. bodybuilding is my, it's my life and, you know, a chance for me to, to live my dream. Yeah. You know, and look, all those stuff you see me doing, that's just the extra stuff, you know? See, that's the thing. When I, when I look at you, that's what I think. I'm like, man, this guy's so genetically gifted. He, he's probably able to, like, miss a meal here or there. And it's nah. like, 
So I you're, like you're on it all day long. I'm on it all day long. That's what people don't see. You know? How many, how many, I, um, <laughs> how many meals a day are you eating? Cause uh, you're, what, what do you weigh right now? Right now I'm about, I just checked this morning and I'm out, I'm at 280. Are you getting just like a regular six meals in? You know, what? Uh, um, six meals for me is a struggle. Five, really? That's just me. Six yeah. meals is a struggle for me. Five, five, that's it. That's actually what I get in the off season. I feel like in the off season, five is like easy for me. But once I'm dieting, I get a little hungrier. I can get six. Yeah, in. for sure. Once I yeah. like, I'll probably do like seven once I'm dieting. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So is your off season program. So let me ask you this. Are you one of those genetic, like Sergio was on the podcast and Sergio was telling me that he has to eat like garbage food to put on weight. Are you that kind of guy or is your diet clean? No, my shit is clean. All day. Really? Yeah, my yeah. diet. I don't even. I don't. I don't even cheat. I don't. I don't. I don't even cheat. Maybe really? I cheat whenever. I don't know. Maybe I'm once a month or some shit like that. Yeah. You know. Um. If I eat garbage, I don't. I don't get any benefit from it. Yeah. Because I'm a hard gainer. I can. I can. I can. I can eat all day and not gain nothing. You know. Really. I struggle with gaining weight. Yeah. But if you, you eat. But and if, if I'm you, eating garbage, what's that? Sorry, but if you eat the garbage, it's not like for me, for example, if I want to break 280 and get to 290 or 300, I got to have like three or four cheat meals a week to like add those extra calories. You don't find that helps you? No, because if I do those cheat meals with, you know, you have the extra fat in there, you know, what not extra carbs. What that'll do for me is I'll, I'll probably end up skipping two meals. Oh, because, fuck up your because I'll, I'll end up just struggling to digest those, you know, those. Yeah. So I got to keep it clean. You know, but that's what get my meals in all day. See, that's why. See, I'm the same way. If I have a heavy cheat meal for lunch, it'll fuck up the next meal. Yep. But that's why I always save my cheat meals for the last meal of the night. Yeah. So like, probably better. I'll, I'll have my cheat meal for like meal five. Yeah. That way, it, like, I can go to bed and I can get up the morning. Next morning, I can still eat, yeah. right? So, have you ever tried that? Have you ever tried having your like a heavy meal at the end of the night? Nah, I never really tried it. If I do chill, it'll be like you know, just going out, you know, for food with a girlfriend, or maybe four, seven. Yeah. You know what I mean? And again, that fucks with my yeah, yeah, yeah. couple meals. Are you are you single or married? I'm, I got a girlfriend. I got, I got an Irish girlfriend. How long have you been with your girl? <laughs> I guess what? My wife is Irish. <laughs> is she? Um, yeah. Um, that was amazing. The fair well, everybody's Irish on Paddy's Day. Uh, no, no. She's, she's Irish all year round. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Um, how long have you been with your girlfriend? Yeah, we've been together uh, five years this year. Okay. This is, this is actually really interesting to me. So uh, I know all women are different. Some are crazier than others. What does your girl think when you have these, all these girls in your videos with the big ass and the big tits and the big, like they don't, she don't care. She doesn't say nothing. I mean, I just start it where it's like, you know, like I don't, she'd be like, I don't like that video. Like, <laughs> Why? You know what I mean? I just start, you know, she was like, yeah, you know, yeah. she'd be like, yo, what, what's up? What's up with that? You know what I mean? Yeah. But now it's like, she knows, you know, it's, it's, it's the job, you know, it's part of the, you know, so you, part of what I do. So you did it, and she didn't like it, and you explained to her that this is just part of your act. Yeah, and she and she understands it now. You know what I mean? she, At the it was a bit of a struggle, like, oh, you know, she'll give out, you know what I mean? But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we'd be good. But now she understands that this is, this, is, this is acting. This is work. That's right, yeah. You know, this is social media, you know? This is entertainment. So let me ask you, a lot of guys – there's a v various types of obviously women that we all decide to be with. Like my, my wife, for example, is not, she's not very uh, domesticated. I guess she's like, she has her own job. She's not in the kitchen cooking my meals and doing all my shit. Right. So is your girl, one of these girlfriends that's like, she's helping you cook all your food and like doing all your stuff or she got her own shit going on. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live in, you know, I, I, now I live in, uh, you know, I live in Florida now. Yeah. Since uh, January, I live here alone. You know what I mean? And my girlfriend, she's still back in Dublin. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, we, we don't, we don't really live together right now. Well, you know, we, we eventually we're going to work it out. Yeah. So she can be able to come out here too. Okay. Um, so we do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of back traveling, and forth, going back here, yeah, traveling. 
Um, but when we're together, I still, I like my, I still cook all my meals. You yeah. Know what I mean? and she don't do that. She got her own stuff going as well. She got her business that she's, she got a family business that she's running back there at home. So she's always on the ball. You know what I mean? So. Do you ever, do you ever get jealous of some of these guys that have girlfriends that kind of make all their food for them and carry all their shit around for them and stuff like that? Be honest. <laughs> nah, to be honest, nah, I'm not. Nah, all that's not like, I mean, all that is nothing to me. Like, my girlfriend's like, she's so supportive, you know? She do absolutely everything. If I wanted to cook for me, look, if I, look, if I ask her to move out here and cook, she'll do all that. Yeah, and yeah. Especially, she's so supportive. She fly to all my shows. When uh, we are expo, she's be the one taking out the videos and stuff. Yeah. Even when I'm doing skit. Yeah, she's the one filming. I did a video there um, that was super, super viral. One of my first few videos. It was like a bodybuilder flex on CCTV. Yeah, I don't ever see that one. Oh, that I was, saw that. I saw that. That was, that, that was featured on Fox News. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. So people thought it was an actual footage from our store. Yeah. But it was actually my girlfriend. Oh shit! You know what I mean? So it's just like you know, she she's it's like we're we're a team. You know what I mean? So yeah. she is super supportive and. You know. Okay, so that kind of answers my next question because a lot of I was going to ask some women don't want to be involved in the bodybuilding world and they're like it's cool you do your thing and mm. some people want to be involved in everything so she's with you like all the time helping you. Oh fly. yeah. Okay. Even right now she cannot wait to fly out to Arnold Classic next year. She's she's even more excited than I am. Yeah. You know she's love, she loved going to shows. Uh, when we got together, she wasn't really when we first started dating. She wasn't really. She like she was like she just she liked to keep fit. But yeah. nothing crazy knows nothing about bodybuilding. But then when we got together, she knows I'm a bodybuilder. I explained everything to her. And she started getting into it. She started getting all excited about all my shows and stuff. Even the when I did when I won the Arnold Classical uh uh Euro 2017, yeah. all the family were there. Were there. Oh, yeah. you know, they all flew in from Dublin to uh Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it was kind of cool, you know. So it was. <laughs> so that's cool. So you got? Do you have any kids or no? No, 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 not no yet. Kids. That's cool, man. I, I think, um, I think it's an, a really important part of what we do. I think the guys who are, end up successful always have somebody there helping them, even if she's not cooking all your meals and everything, but somebody who's mm. there and supportive and like, yeah, you need by that. your side. Yeah. Um, bodybuilding is hard. <laughs> does she does she train too or no? Does she? Oh, she trains. Yeah, she trains. She gonna do any shows or no? She's not. That's not her thing. <laughs> no, nah, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, once enough. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You imagine having two. Uh, uh, well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Kind of, I'm not crazy. Uh, you know, two serious bodybuilders in one place. You know, what I mean, especially as a couple. I don't know how people do it. Those people that you know, they compete and the girlfriend compete as well. Yeah, some some, <laughs> some tension going. On. It seems crazy to me, man. Yeah, I can't like, imagine that. But um, no, I wouldn't want my girlfriend to get into that. You know, she's she'll she'll stick to the business part of it. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, yeah. she 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 gonna be there to secure the bags. You know what I'm talking yeah, yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she loves that more. What, um, tell me about the cars, man. I'm curious about the cars. I see all these different cars on your Instagram. I see shitty cars. I see Rolls Royces. I yeah, see Lambos. I love cars. I know, but which are any of them yours? Uh, not yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> after, after the Arnold's, right? It was funny because, hold on. Uh, where was I? It was, uh, I think it was in Miami or some shit. And, uh, dude came over to me and was like, yo, bro, um, what he said? It was a, uh, it was like, yo, that good joint looks amazing, bro. Fuck, that's good shit. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is, is it yours? I'm like, that's not Because <laughs> I had a Rolls Royce in the, one of the Wreck the One video. Yeah. Uh, what was that? All the way up, we made a rap video. Yeah, that's the one like, I seen that, yeah. Three Rolls Royces over there. <laughs> Who's? And, you know, Aaron likes to go big. You yeah. Know, so. <laughs> is that what he's doing? Is he renting cars for the videos? I mean, those cars, yeah, they, those cars were rented for, for the videos. Yeah, those yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. So I have a question because I saw a video that it made me uncomfortable, and I want to ask you about it. Mm, how uncomfortable? <laughs> uh, it, just bo it just bothered me. It was like, oh, not, your, not your videos. Your videos are fine. Your yeah. videos are awesome, man. They fucking give me Thank good. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. I don't get it a lot. No, no, no. I love that shit. It makes me laugh every day. But I saw a video with you and Kenny K.O., 
Kenny KO does a lot of videos about trying to like out people. He's this guy. He does a YouTube channel. He tries to like, oh, confront, I, yeah, 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 yeah. he I tries know, to yeah, confront yeah. people. And I saw him yeah. confront you and you kind of laughed him off. You're like, get out of here. Yeah. But does that kind of shit bother you? Or are you just like, whatever, I don't give a fuck. What was the video? What did I say? Which video? It was at, it was at an expo. He confronted you and he said, are you natural or not? Which is a fucking <laughs> stupid question to begin with. <laughs> yeah, I don't, see, I don't see all that. I don't take that serious. That's like, you know, I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I can't remember what I said. About, oh, I think I said something like, uh, I'm mad at y'all did something like that. <laughs> you did. Yeah, all that's a joke to me. I don't take nah, I don't take all that serious. Kenny's all right. He's a cool dude. I've met him a couple of times. You know, you get, you get under pe- some people's skin and stuff like that. Yeah. But all that, you know, still social media, you know, for me, social media is a joke. You know what do I mean? You- is it because you, is it, do you think it's because you've kind of grown up with social media? Cause you're, you're a lot younger than I am. Like you're 27 or, and I'm 40. So it's a little bit, I'm a little bit well, ahead of it. 40. Well, thanks man. <laughs> but you look proud of too. <laughs> um, no, it, it seems like you take everything in stride. You just have no, it seems social. It's like, you're like Regan. You remind me of Regan that way. Re- Regan kind of takes social media in stride. It's like just part of his everyday life. Yeah. <laughs> is that kind of how you see it? I mean, for me, again, social media is a business. And as well as for me, it's, it's, it's fun. You know what I mean? And uh, it's a way for me to share my positive energy. Yeah. You know? Because I'm a positive dude, man. I don't take, I don't take life too serious. And... Um, I love bodybuilding. I'm just like, it's a way for me just to show people, you know, bodybuilding is a fun sport. You yeah. can be a serious bodybuilder. And as well, you know, had a little bit of joke there, you know, it's all about these positive vibes. Yeah. You know, that's me. I hate negativity. I cannot hang with negative people. Yeah. With me, everything is, it's not everything has got to be, you know, it got to gotta be chill. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Because I'm a super positive dude. How did you... Is that something you consciously work at or is that just who you are naturally? It's just who I am naturally. You know what I mean? It's just like, because a lot of, a lot of my favorite people things like, oh, you have to like, do, uh, do people ask me, how do I make all these videos? How do I come up with all these concepts and these ideas? You sit there cracking your head. No, I don't. You know, a lot of this just happened. You know? I was going to ask you that. Is this something you plan for days or is this something you just... A lot of it, 90% of those videos just happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even my first one, I was in a, I was in a, I was in a gym and I was training. Yeah. Uh, I had my videographer there as well. This was back in Dublin. And my videographer was a skinny dude, you know. And just me, just being me, just having fun and just you know, I love I love messing with people in the gym and just cracking jokes and and just having fun. Yeah. And uh, this dude, my videographer, is just one skinny ass dude. And I saw him trying to like, he was trying to curl. <laughs> and I thought it was like the most funniest shit ever. It looks yeah. so fucking funny. You know, I'm like, yo, let's do that. Let's do a quick transformation. So I had him, I had him put on my stringer. <laughs> looks like a pajamas on him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had him curling some uh, bitch ass weight. Yeah. And uh, so I told one of my, I told my 20 partner to offer my pre-workout. So it's going to chop down the pre-workout yeah, yeah. and then boom, it's going to turn into me. Yeah. That was my first one. Yeah. That was my first viral video. Yeah. And, and that just happened. That just happened. That's fucking amazing. That's hilarious. Cause people think of this shit for a while and they don't come up with anything you know I mean? <laughs> that good. And you're just coming up with it. I find it, I find it, I'm actually envious of the fact that you are such a positive person just kind of without trying. Cause a lot of us, and I'm one of them, like, okay, let me ask you this. Do you ever have, like, you're getting ready for the Arnolds. Yes, and sir. It's a really big show, and there's going to be great competition there. Mm-hmm. Do you have days where you're like, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I won't do well. Maybe, like, do you have self-doubt, or are you just such a positive person that you're just going through without? I mean, a- we're all human, you know? And yeah. sometimes we do have, we all do have, like, self doubts Mm-hmm. Especially if you're aiming so high, if you if you have a big dream, yeah. I mean, if you don't, sometimes you gotta be, <laughs> you can't lie. If you if you dream big enough, yeah, sometimes you be like, holy shit, you know what I mean? Is he even, is this even possible? Yeah, you know, but that's okay. That's normal. That's cool. Yeah, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, you just always gotta uh, uh, 
remember of you know the power within you you know yeah. you believe in yourself like you can absolute you can do anything you put your mind that's what i believe you know you can do absolutely anything you put your mind to so let me you know? let me give you a scenario let's say you wake up let's say you wake up tomorrow morning cuz this kind of, uh, this kind of this kind of shit happens to me so i'll just put it out there yeah so let's say you wake up tomorrow morning and you take a look at yourself in the mirror and you're like fuck i don't know man that's like that's a big fucking show i don't know like yeah. do you, and then you feel like that how do you do you just erase that or does it linger with you for a little bit um it might for a little bit but not too long you know yeah. sometimes i do i do feel like that and i don't let it i don't let it mess with my head you know yeah. you know what i mean because i'm like no it doesn't you know it doesn't okay, matter okay tell me okay tell me what because i know listen the reason i'm asking you these things is mm. Uh, a lot of people listening, I think a lot of bodybuilders more so than other sports because it's subjective, right? If you play yeah. basketball, if you, if you, if you're a boxer or whatever, you score enough points, you win. And our yeah. sport is very subjective. So I think there's more self doubt. Uh, and I think a lot of people feel it. So a lot yeah. of people want to know, first of all, they want to know that people at our level feel that way. So that's good that they know that, but they also want to know how do you get out of that funk? So what do you tell yourself when you're like, when you feel the overwhelming pressure of the Arnolds, yeah. how do you get past it? You know, again, I just, I just, 24 seven, I stay positive. I always trying to maintain positive attitude, you know what I mean? And always trying to like, you know, stay focused on my goal. And what helps me a lot of time is when I look back and see how far I've come. You know yeah. I mean? Look at me, bro. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an African dude. I was born in a jungle somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? For real, for real, bro. You know, yeah. and uh, I was able to make it out of Africa. I made it to 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 an island in Europe called Ireland. Yeah. You know, from Ireland, I made it out of Ireland with 1.5 million followers to Florida. Yeah. So when I look about all of that, I'm like, yo, what else? Do you think uh, your? Do you know you what think, I mean? Do you think people's self doubt and anxiety comes from having such an easy upbringing? Because I feel like what you're saying is your upbringing was so, not hard, but like you have a very, you know, it's not, what didn't, it doesn't sound easy. No, it's not easy. <laughs> that you, that the things that normal people see as difficult, you see as like nothing. They see, you see as you just take it in stride. You know what I mean? That's right. So you think we all have it too easy and that's why we worry about so much shit. I mean, not everybody. No, not everybody. But some people, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You know, some people, you know, they do, you know, they, they get everything easy and a little problem like this, that like it's not even nothing. Yeah. They let them, you know, get to them. Like, you know, stuff like, I'm like, yo, go to Africa. <laughs> you see kids suffering. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You're like five, six, seven years old. You're trying to scrape some shit from the flood to eat. You have no water. Is that really? Cause so, okay. Tell me this. When, that's the kind of stuff I see on TV. So when you, when you think of your childhood from up to age nine or 10, before you moved to Ireland, is that what it's like? Like the stuff you see on TV? Like, no, that's not, that's not, that's not what it's like, but there okay. are kids out there in Africa. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of stuff that people see on TV, you know, from Africa, it's not really the way it is in all Africa. There's yeah. certain parts where people struggle. Yeah, yeah. And their sign power way you get like all these rich motherfuckers. Yeah. You know, yeah. so all Africa is not like that. Yeah. There's some really poor area in Africa where kids suffer. Yeah. You know, from no water, no food. What was water. your is that kind of where you grew up in one of those areas or in between? I was a little bit in between, you know, because my my parents never had shit. You know, yeah. my father was a farmer, my mother never worked. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. So for me, I grew up pretty fast. Yeah. You know, as far as I can remember. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I remember age seven, you, you got to go there, type your, you know, go to the farm, go, you got to go get some for the family to help the parents out. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Get some fresh water. You know what I mean? So like, all that, you know, all that made me a very strong person. Yeah. You know, and since, especially since I moved to Ireland, you know, in my head, I grew up really, really, really fast. And I, I've always have a big, big dream. You yeah. know, I always knew that 
I wanted something big in life. Okay, wait a minute. Where did the dream, did your dreams get big when you hit Ireland or was it always there even from when you were in Africa? When I got to Ireland, that's when, you know, that's when I start to, you know, what, what's, what's out there. Because what triggered it? Africa, was that? What triggered it? You just started seeing things in Ireland that kind of I mean, like. I started seeing things. We, 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 as a kid in Africa, you know, like if you look at the kids in Africa, you know, even the kids that are sovereign, they're happy. Yeah. They are like the happiest kid in the world. They don't yeah, know yeah. any better. You know, they that's don't right. know what's out there. You know what I mean? They don't know any, any, any better life. Yeah. But when you made out of, when you made it out of Africa to Europe and you see how people are living. Yeah. You know, you see how life is, what's out there, like, holy, wow, do people really living like this? You know, okay, people actually doing stuff, people, cars and stuff. Yeah. You know, people drive Lambos. Yeah. <laughs> you would want to shoot for that, you know, like, yo, Yeah. I want to make it, you know, yeah. I want to be able to do that. You know, especially if you have family, you know, we're, we're still, you know, you know, we're still suffering. You want to be able to help them out, yeah. you know, to achieve something great, you know, so you, you can be able to help your family out. So how much you know, of your so when I moved to Ireland, that's when, you know, I, I, I was, I was aiming for big things. How much of your family still lives in Africa? Uh, my father and my mother still, still in Africa. How many? Most of my family, are, most of my families are, are in Africa, but um, I've got a couple of brothers in, in Dublin, Ireland, and I've got a lot of nephews and nieces in Ireland as well. But what's your immediate family? Like you have just two siblings? You have two brothers, that's it? No, I've got, I got five brothers and one sister. Five brothers and one sister, and they've all moved outside of Africa. Uh, I got two living in Nigeria, two living in Ireland. Yeah, and the rest are back in uh, Nigeria. Okay, so what do they think about what you're doing? I mean, at the start, my parents don't really understand what bodybuilding is. To be like, you know, I've been bodybuilding since, you know, I told you since I was fourteen. Oh, but- I was working out. I was always training really, really hard. Even yeah. though half the time I didn't, I didn't know what bodybuilding is, but I knew, I knew how to work. Yeah. I knew that I have to have work in me, you know, so I've, yeah. I've always pushing hard. Yeah. You know, so and my parents didn't know what that was. And, you know, they, they see my chest growing. They, my mother thought I was, you know, I had some problem going. I need to go to the doctor <laughs> and, or some shit like that. You know what I mean? But now that they, they, they started seeing my videos, uh, YouTube, everywhere where they sound like oh okay you know what i mean yeah <laughs> and now they're able to like you know help them out somehow they, they like oh, okay you know they're now uh uh, uh they're now very supportive in what i'm doing it still they don't know what bodybuilding really is yeah you know but i'm sure they'll they will understand that's really uh it's really admirable of you so you are you sending money back you're sending money back home to your parents oh yeah of course <laughs> that's awesome man that that's yeah, i gotta look after my that's my biggest that's like my biggest motivation and it's all when you doubt yourself and how do you snap out of that? You know, when you, when you think about your family, yeah. you know, when you think about your mother, your father, you know, the kind of life you want for them, you wouldn't let anything get in your way. You know what I mean? Was it hard for you to move from Africa to move with your brother and move away from your parents? Cause I can't imagine that at nine or 10 years old, you know, to be honest for me, it wasn't hard, bro. It was, <laughs> okay. No, to be honest, right? When you when you're a kid in Africa, you have a different mindset, you know? Yeah. When you're like, yo, this is opportunity of a lifetime. That's right. To go to Europe. Yeah. I didn't think what I was thinking. I, I didn't remember what I was thinking. But I didn't I was like, let's go, let's do it. Yeah. I think people actually just... do meet the parents, you know. Uh it would be cool to grow up with your parents. Yeah. But well, because I like, you know, I moved away since I was, you know, I was, I was a little kid. So I don't really, I'm used to being by myself. You yeah. know, I'm used to like just doing my thing and just focusing on my goal and just focusing on being great. I think we have a really skewed view of reality here in North America sometimes because we have it so good and so yeah. easy sometimes that, I mean, not everybody has it easy, but for the most part. I feel like we have it easy. So a lot of us, I think, listen, people listening, I mean, myself even, I, I don't understand that mindset, but I can, I can understand what you're saying. I just can't understand that feeling, right? Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, it's, you're almost a little bit envious of it when you hear it because you're like, this guy's willing to do anything to reach his mm-hmm. ultimate goal. And your ultimate goal is not even selfish. It's like, I want to send back to my family and this and that. So that's cool, right? But, yeah, that's, that's the motivation right there. 
I want to ask you uh, another question about your Instagram because we talked about how serious you are as a bodybuilder and I had no idea you were that serious. I had no idea. <laughs> you know, I, I like that, you know? Keep no, I did like that, bro. You don't keep me on stage. You're, like, Ooh, that You're trying to no, creep in, creep, creep in under the radar. Boogeyman. <laughs> and that's why I picked that name, bro. Boogeyman. Yeah, I know. I got it. I got it. But what I'm trying to say, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this. Do you feel like you want to keep it that way where people just have no idea? Or do you want to show people that, okay, I can be funny. I can do skits. I can do this stuff. But it also, I also do this, all this other stuff. And that's how I built this crazy physique. Cause I don't think people understand, man. It, I think a lot of people think you're just like born this way. <laughs> um, to be honest, I don't really, I don't really care how people see me and you know, I'm just want to keep doing my thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of message DMs, I get a lot of DMs and especially like from kids and stuff. I get a lot of DMs and you know, the most common that normally get is like, don't change. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't really, I'm going to just keep doing me, you know, I can yeah. funk, doing bodybuilder, do, I mean, doing bodybuilding. And if, you know, people that doesn't think I think bodybuilding series, it's all good. No, you know no, no. I mean? I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you should change. You obviously have a great formula. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What I'm saying is, do you want to show, like, I, I like showing people the real side of bodybuilding because I want them to know that like, this isn't just the pictures you see in the magazine. You know, I have to eat these shitty meals sometimes. I have to do yeah. this, I have to do that. Do you feel like it's important to show that so people know? Or are you just like, look, they can figure it out, but I'm going to keep doing the fun stuff? Yeah, of course. It, it is important to show that, you know, to, to show them, you know, my, you know, what I'm passionate about. Yeah. You know, and how serious I am with it. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, with content, of course. You know, even as well, I've been doing a little bit of serious content with Rec and One. And... Uh, and I think all that, all that, all, everything would change, you know, like the way people like, you know, see me and bodybuilding, because people can't really relate to me in that level of bodybuilding yet. Yeah. Because people haven't seen, they haven't seen me compete. No. All my shows were done in Europe. You know? Yeah, no, I agree. And as an amateur, I can say I was undefeated. Yeah. I was best out there before I was, before I was a pro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I have the same mindset, you yeah. know, as a, as a pro bodybuilder, you know, my goal is to be, is to be great, you know, and one of the great, greatest gifts that, you know, God has given me is patience. You know what I mean? I like to take my time, so I don't rush things. You know, it seems like it. Time is everything, you yeah. know? Everybody got their own time, you know, because we are, we are, we are on, a, on, a, on, a, on a specific different lane. You know, when you stay on your lane, your time is going to come, you yeah. know? And, and I think that's a, that's a problem in bodybuilding today that a lot of people don't have the patience. Yeah. You know, they just, everybody want to win now. Everybody want to be Mr. Olympia now. Everybody, that's why you see people jumping from, from open bodybuilding that goes to uh, 212. They don't work in 212. They jump to classic. From classic, they go to what? What's it? Men's physique? Men's physique, yeah. You know, it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If you have a goal, you stick to it. It's gonna, of course, it's gonna take. That's why people ask me, bro, you haven't competed in three years. I was like, yeah, so what? I've been prepared. I'm preparing, you know, I'm whatever, three years out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Day, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? And because yeah. uh, I know I'm not ready yet. Yeah. You know, I just don't wanna, I don't wanna step and say, and then like, you know what? I wanna step and say when I'm ready. You, you wanna make an impact. You wanna time. make an impact. Yeah. When, yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? So. so I wanna ask you a couple, I don't wanna keep you too long because I know you, you got a busy schedule, but. I want to ask you a few bodybuilding questions still. What, uh, who do you, if you had to me measure your physique against another pro, mm. who do you see yourself most like? Oof, hold up. Okay. You got a call coming in? No, no. Oh, my phone about to turn off. Hold up, my bad. Boom. Sir. Yeah. All right, go again. So who do you, out of all the pros, like we all kind of emulate, like to emulate somebody or see ourselves like a different, like a bodybuilder or somebody we want to beat or be compared to on stage. Mm. Is there, is there somebody you think your physique matches up with? Like somebody you think you could see yourself kind of being in that direction, right? Mm. Like, do you see yourself like a, like, do you see yourself like a flex wheeler? Do you see yourself like a Kai green? 
do you see yourself like a, a Brandon Curry? Like, how do you see your physique shaping up? Like, when you envision stepping on the Arnold stage, yeah. what is it going to look like? Um, I just feel like my physique is so different. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's, it just, I have a, I, I, my physique is kind of weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's so different. Yeah. You know, like, if you look at me, right, I don't have any uh, crazy body parts sticking out. Yeah, well, you I don't. You, you, look, you, you won't even think I, if a lot of people like this, they might be like, you know, then you see me real, I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, I have that. I'm like, so, you know, my, my physique is just so different. But if I had to like, we can say like a little bit of flex, wheeler, and mix, I don't know. Your physique uh, is very different. Yeah. Because I've been trying to, when I've been looking at it, I've been trying to say, who does he look like? And I can't really put my fit and finger on it because you have like the thickness of a Kai Green, but you have the structure of a Lionel Becky, but you also, it's just, it's very different. It's very different. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty amazing when you put it all together, man. I, you know what I get? I get a question. I do, people do compare me a lot to uh, shit. What's his? I think he's Nigerian as well. Is that his? Uh, what's his name? I'm not sure. Ah, I think it's 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 Nigerian as well. Take, dude. Damn, I just lost. It. I just lost it in my head. Open. Uh, is, he a, is he a pro? Yeah, a pro. Back in the back in the '80s, but he never competed. Oh. Uh... He had a flat top. Take as dude, amazing physique. I know who you're talking about. He fucking, I can't think of it now either. I know, yeah. I know. And he only did a couple shows, then he retired or something yeah, like that. He said he, and he retired, yeah. It's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, I know I had it. I but it's not you. I can see the physique, but he's People a lot. always coming to compare me to him. Yeah, but I think he's shorter than you are. But yeah, I can see what you're yeah, saying. He's short. He's short. Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. It just, it, for those listening, we apologize. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't. Yeah. Think of it at the moment. It's going to come to me. Yeah. So what's your, before you go, um, yeah. a couple quick hitters, because people like these little fast ones. So cardio, do you do any cardio in the off season? Yeah, well, yeah, I was. I was, because uh, I, I don't know if you remember, I had a guest post in there about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so my cardio for that was a little bit high. But I, yeah, I normally, yeah, my cardio, I always try and keep the cardio in the off season at least two times a week. Yeah, you know, and just to keep their, you know, keep the lines and keep the, of course, I want to do my fast cardio as well. I'll do my abdominal workouts or just to control the core and the whole. I don't want to. I don't want my. For me, that's like my special, you know, that tight, yeah. small yeah. waist. Do you um, wear a waist trainer at all or no? I don't wear waist trainer, but I do a lot of vacuum work when I'm doing cardio, fast cardio. While you're doing your cardio? Well, after my cardio. Yeah. What do you do for your vacuums? Are you doing like? Just 10 no, seconds. I just do uh, 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 in between, uh, say, I'm doing cable crunching. In between that, in between my cells, I'll, be, I'll do some bent over, suck in, suck out, vacuum on the, you know, when you're bent, yeah, yeah. Hand on your knees and stuff like that. So I do a lot of that just to, yeah. you know, control the, the, to be able to control the core. What, uh, uh, in the off season, do you do a lot of high fats or no with your diet? No, I can't because I can't really digest. I can't really digest right. fat. So <laughs> you you're know, trying to yeah. keep things so as fast My fat is pretty low, you know. And my, my, my food is pretty clean. So what's a typical meal? Like chicken and rice, steak and potato? Chicken and rice, uh, steak twice a day, steak and rice, sweet potatoes and chicken, salmon, salmon and rice, egg, egg whites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Eggs, and oatmeal. Okay, last question. Or last couple questions. When... Did you start using gear? I'm naughty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a vegan bodybuilder. What are you talking about? <laughs> You're a freak. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave it there. That's, that's a good enough answer. <laughs> <That's, that's, laughs> I I'm like, a vegan bodybuilder. <laughs> you know what? I like that answer. I, I like to... Uh, I, you know, it's crazy. You stay, you, I, I have trouble asking you some questions because you like to stay positive, but I did, I started the podcast because I don't like all the negative, all the false information that's out there about gear and all this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I try to get the guys on like you and all the other pros to like uh, talk about it a little bit. But if you don't, honestly, it's cool, man. Yeah. Leave. I mean, you know, I have a, you know, I just keep it positive. I have a lot of kids follow my page and stuff like that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. kids yeah. taking these interpret, interpret stuff and yeah, <laughs> no, it's no. all good. It, it's all good, yeah. man. Uh, um, I'm sure everybody knows man. Everybody knows what bodybuilding is. They know what's involved in bodybuilding and <laughs> No, they do. You're you know right. I mean? so, yeah. What um before we go, is there anything you like a message you want to put out there or anything you want anybody you want to thank or anything before we head off? Um for the viewers, I'm gonna just say just be you, man, and be patient, you know. Body be don't try try not to rush anything, man. Just you know, stick to stick to your plan and believe in that work in progress. You know, try not to do anything too fast and just be careful. You know what I mean? Health is wealth. I, uh, the first thing you said was be yourself. Is that, I feel like that's your recipe for success in your Instagram because I feel like a lot of people want to be you. Yes. They don't understand that they should just be. Yeah, that's, I mean, people ask me like, bro, how do you grow your Instagram? Because I've been 1 million followers in less than a year yeah. you know what i mean and that's from me being who i am you know yeah. not really care not what people think about me you know and that goes a long way and as and as well being positive you know and uh there's a lot of people out there you know they, they're trying to be something they're not comparing do themselves you, do you care at all like do you when okay when you post something and you read the comments do you care at all what people are saying about you or are you just like this is what i like to do and this is what I'm doing, whether you like it or not. I don't care what people say in the comment box. I think the comments are so funny. I be, do be there, you know, just reading comments, just laughing to myself. And um, as for the recent feeder I posted, I was in a, uh, what was it? I was at Motor Beach Safari. Yeah. I was, in, I don't know, because I was in a cage. I was butt naked. <laughs> <laughs> and the chimps, and the monk, the chimps were there, you know what I mean? So it was a little skit. You yeah. Know, but just, you know, uh, 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 creating awareness for wildlife and, you know, uh, but the comments were crazy, man, you know, but I thought it was funny and it, it's really cool when you see people arguing, you know, they yeah. come in, but they go mad at each other. Like, Dude, you're like, you're taking time of your day to just uh, write some shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, the co again, social media is all fun game. <laughs> so it doesn't, so it doesn't, okay, this is actually me just trying to learn. So you don't give a shit if what anybody writes and you just, do you block anybody? Do you leave the comments? I have never them? blocked nobody. If I block somebody, maybe they're sending me some stupid shit that I don't want to see. Oh, okay. Or they are, you know, or they are, I don't even know, man, but I don't, I don't block people, you know? So what, no mean, matter what they, them. no matter what they write, you just leave it. It doesn't matter what, yeah, just leave it. You know? I mean, when I create content, I hope it goes viral, you know? And yeah. Who are the people going to make the video go viral? A lot of these haters, you know what I mean? Comments, <laughs> you know what I mean? But to be honest, I actually don't get, I don't, I don't, I can't even say I have haters. Well, you know, everybody got haters. Yeah. I don't, I don't get a lot of, I don't get hate comments on my page unless if I post something a little bit controversial you know, yeah. with people, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't really get, I don't, on my page, it's all positive vibes, man. And as well, you know, it's funny because, a lot of my stuff are not really bodybuilding. They're like just generic joke stuff. And when I do post that bodybuilding stuff, it just go, people go, whoo, shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. People get excited for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which is, which is, I like to, you know, just mix it up, you know, fun, bodybuilding, fun, bodybuilding. I get it. Yeah. You know? um, listen, man, whatever you're doing, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I know myself and a lot of other guys I know are following your page. You just get a good laugh, but. A lot of people secretly are seeing what, like a lot of people inside the sport, they they see what you're doing and they see the physique and we're all kind of waiting. So yeah, I'm it's, excited, it's man. Pretty thank impressive, you. man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. I cannot wait to step on stage to show the world what Boogeyman's all about. And uh big shout out to Redcon One um, for making all of this possible. I've been here in South Florida. Yeah. My it's live, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Redcon One, best supplement company in the game. And um, we're about to take over, bro. <laughs> hey, watch out for the Boogeyman next year. I'm coming out with a whole fire. I'm coming for that bag of money because I love money. <laughs> That's going to be our clip right there. All that cash. Um, That's on me. <laughs> we are, I think we're all looking forward to it, man. I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to see what you come up with. 
Yo, thank you, yeah. man, for having me on, bro. I want to thank you for taking the time, man. I really, really appreciate as it. As I said, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. When are you, when are you back in stage? Um, maybe the Arnolds. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll be cool. That's, no, I don't I'll know. Cool. I don't know if I'll. I don't know if I'll do the Arnolds. Or I, I, you know what? For me, it's it's a matter of this. I just got to stay healthy. Oh. Like I keep. I've had a lot of injuries in the last three or four years. Yeah, and your biceps there, right? How's that? Tricep. My tricep is. Uh, the surgery went well. I'm 12 weeks post op. Oh, okay. Uh, my doctor said I can start to put some pressure on it now, so I can start to push a little bit. But I'm actually aiming for the Indianapolis show. It's like right after the Arnolds. Oh, okay. I'm going to do something small just to see if I can get ready and not get hurt. Yeah. And, and then kind of see where things go from there. But uh, if I can get on the Arnold stage one more time, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm sure you can. You know, why not? You know, you're the legend. Well, every fucking time, man. I was like, every time I'm three or four weeks out, my body just says, fuck you. That's it. Yeah. So. You speak, sorry, question for you. You speak uh, Arabic. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're right. Not, right? I'm, I'm Lebanese. Ah, Lebanese. Ah, I, speak, okay. I speak Arabic at like a grade eight level. Like it's very, it's very like, like my mom, my mom speaks very broken English. So when I go home, uh, I speak Arabic with my mother. Ah, okay. okay. But I'm, that they are in uh, Lebanon, right? No, no, no. My mom's here in Canada. Ah, okay. My okay. immediate, my immediate family's here. My, my father's passed away, but my mom, okay, I have uh, three brothers and a sister. We're all here in Canada. Oh, that's amazing. The rest of my family is in Lebanon. Oh, okay, okay. So, but uh, yeah, I speak Arabic, but not great Arabic. So, yeah. I was wondering if that's your name. Yeah, no, sometimes my fans will try and speak Arabic to me, and I'm like, yeah, I don't so know. Do. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. They're extremely disappointed, but I don't know what the fuck. I can't, you yeah, know. Yeah. I grew up here, so yeah. that's how it is. But All anyway, right, bro. All right, man. Thank you for the time, man. I appreciate it. I will. Yeah, thank uh, you for having me on, bro. Hopefully, I can have you on again when you're uh, prepping and we can talk about things going forward. Yeah, for sure. Okay, brother. Thanks a lot. Thanks, brother. Okay, man.